And now, more great video previews from Tommy Nelson. A classic tale. Many seasons passed. The three tiny seeds became three trees. The Legend of the Three Trees. Narrated by Hal Holbrook. With original music performed by Marilyn McCoo and Andy Chrisman of For Him. Seeds of life bring forth three trees with great hopes and ambitions. Whimsical animal characters bring comic relief as we watch the dreams of the three trees crushed in the course of life, only to find their true purpose. The pine tree's dream had come to an end. A touching story and vivid visual imagery bring this classic legend to life. He will never give up Seeds of truth hope and purpose, told in this beautiful new animated story from Tommy Nelson. The Legend of the Three Trees. Welcome to Prairie Town, everybody. Little oh, dogs on the prairie. In our territory now. And we're glad you're here. Three hilarious right videos there, from Tommy Nelson that'll have the entire family no laughing together. What? I can't hire a snake. Everybody knows snakes are nasty, rotten, horrible, disgusting, low-down, belly-crawling, vermin-infested varmints. Uh, no events. None taken, sir. Whoa! let stop Prairie Town! Stop after that, Prairieville! Comedy Prairie with a Prairie purpose. Prairie, 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 Prairie City, Prairie Wood, Prairie... As you laugh your way through stories of value and self-worth, as told in the everyday lives of our Prairie Town characters. A wild stagecoach just attacked me, in broad daylight, no less. Oh, sorry, Patterson, that's not a wild stagecoach, that's Steve, he works for me. Great job, Steve. What's going on with Miss Gattay? She sure did a lousy job on my hair. Your move. You think that's bad? Look at this. You can practically see my bald spot. Don't miss any episodes of Little Dogs on the Prairie. The cowboys like to say they say Oh, and by the way, no animals were hurt during the filming of this video. Good, you're starting to relax. All right, wrap it up. I think we've made our point. Available now from Tommy Nelson. And now, for our feature presentation. Hey. I guess you're wondering why I'm on this wall. But you see, I'm trying to hide from God. It's a little game we play. It's not very fair, though. He always seems to know right where I am. Maybe that's because he's, he's God. <laughs> oh. Beware, 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 gravitational pull. Just like I was saying, <laughs> I'm just a man. I'm not a very smart one at that. Well, thank goodness, God loves us just like we are. Falls and all. Coming back there. Not too good. Well, what, well, what do the directions say? Brush daily to remove plaque. Daily? <laughs> this is gonna take a while. Uh, seems like after all this time, I've learned 
You can't play hide and seek with God. Turn to the left, please. Being all knowing sort of gives God the advantage, you know. Have you ever tried to hide from God? Has he ever asked you? Ooh, careful. Has he ever asked you to do something that you really didn't want to do? So you pretended you couldn't hear him? Or you hid from him, hoping he wouldn't find you? And maybe he'd just forget all about it. Uh, and in the end, you just wound up feeling sad or, or, or looking silly. <laughs> well, believe me, I know just how you feel. But there's a way to keep from making yourself sad or looking silly. And that's the theme of our show today. It's a big word that means doing what God tells you to do when he tells you to do it. And that, that word is uh, it, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a really big word. Ah, what is that word? It's uh, it, who is that? Big word delivery for Mr. Henry. Oh, oh, perfect. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, where do you want it? Uh, put it on the table. All right. No, no, on the floor. On the floor. On the floor. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Floor. <laughs> Whew, uh, put, on my there on you forehead. Go. Uh, there you go. Now, uh, if you'll just sign, please. What are you talking about sign? I got a sign. I got my hands falling and everything. Um, okay. I, you know, I've got, oh, there you go. Oh, sign oh. here. Okay. Say, I don't mean to be nosy, but uh, what are you doing? Oh, a theme, huh? Well, maybe my delivery will help. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um. Oh. Do you need anything? Oh. Okay. Hey, your secret's safe with me. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll be outside if you need me. I can't huh? Oh, yeah. Oh. Thanks a lot. I lose more pins this way. <laughs> hmm. Sorry. That's <laughs> uh, drooly. When will they ever learn? You just can't hide from God. It's time to rattle your thinking cap with a round of nuts and bolts. Now, let's see if you can come up with the answer before I spell it out for you. All right, Mr. Henry was trying to hide from God. Now, name two people in the first book of the Bible who also tried to hide from the big guy. Any ideas? Well, they enjoyed a nice garden, and they didn't have to plant seed or pull weeds. Yep, the answer's Adam and Eve. Yeah, did I shake you up or did you nail the answer? Yeah, well, either way, thanks for playing Nuts and Bolts. Uh, I, I, I can't read it from this position. What does it say? Oh, bad I ants. What? What's that supposed to mean? Well, read it again. Oh, bad I ants. Your, 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 your phonics modulator needs a tune-up. You gotta get me out of this thing. <laughs> maybe, maybe our story will tell us what the theme is. Uh, uh, Circuitous, uh, if you don't mind. Oh, I love this story. <laughs> Talk about running from God. Now, Jonah was a prophet, which means he spoke to the people for God. God told him what to say and who to say it to. But did he do what God told him to do when God told him to do it? Well, you just watch and you tell me. See if you can figure out the theme of our show, too. <laughs> Here. I heard there's going to be a great wrestling match today between two important Bible folk. Oh, oh, here it is, here it is. In one corner, we have the all-powerful, mighty God. In the other corner, we have Jonah, a man with a plan of his own, not God. Jonah sort of worked for God, you know, like as his messenger service. They're scheduled for three battle rounds here. Oh, oh, the first battle is heating up, but I don't want to go to Nineveh. These people there, they're, they're so bad. Go there and tell them 
to shape up. Well, folks, it looks like Jonah's off on his mission. We can see him moving right now. He's, oh, wait, wait a minute. Jonah is going the wrong way. That's right. That's not where God told him to go. He is now walking up to a boat. And it looks like Jonah's going to disobey God. And now he's getting away. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonah just won the first round. But wait, even as I speak, a huge storm cloud is moving above the boat. Where did this storm come from? It wasn't on my radar. What are we going to do? Everyone pray. Where's that fellow who hopped on the boat at the last minute? Hey, you. Why are you sleeping at a time like this? Get up and pray like the rest of us. I can't pray because... I'm running away from God! So this is all your fault? You caused this storm? Just throw me overboard, then the waters will calm down. Sorry, Jonah. It doesn't seem to be any other way. Hold your nose. Hey, the water is getting calmer already. Hey, 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 God! Since you know where I am, can you help me out? Ladies and gentlemen, I see something huge right behind him. It's a... What is that? <laughs> hey, there's something fishy going on around here. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonah is stuck inside a big fat whale. God definitely won this round. Round three will be the tiebreaker. Yoo-hoo, God! I could use some help in here. Jonah must not have really learned his lesson right away because God has not let him out of the whale now for three days. Or maybe that's just how long it took the whale to swim to the right place. The place where Jonah should have gone instead of trying to run away. Oh, 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 what's happening now? <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, our apologies. That whale has just regurgitated Jonah. Nevertheless, guess where he just landed? Yes, your guess is correct. Smack in good old Nineveh. Okay, God. Okay, wh whatever you want, I'll do it. What's next? Get up, Jonah. Preach against the city of Nineveh, what I tell you to preach. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand amazed. Jonah's actually delivering the message to the people in Nineveh that they're sinners and need to turn back to God. And ladies and gentlemen, they are actually listening. I guess they really needed to hear God's message. No wonder God wanted Jonah to obey. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hiding from God can sure get messy. Anyway, now I'm trying to tell you. God told Jonah that Jonah Boy, that thing's noisy. It needs a muffler. Anyway, as I was trying to say, do you see why God wanted Jonah to obey? There was a good reason for, for, for Jonah to do as he was told, because God knew that Jonah could play a wonderful part in turning thousands of people back to God. Now, Jonah's disobedience, uh, it, it wasn't going to stop God's plan. God's a lot bigger than that. But Jonah opened the door for a lot of pain and trouble by not following God's directions. <sighs> I guess Jonah's arms just were too short to box with God. <laughs> and so are yours. So are mine. Hey, I feel inspired. I think I've got a song. I think I'll call this whale of the tail the, the deep, deep down in the belly blues. Now Jonah was a prophet who needed to obey. When God said go to Nineveh, he sailed the other way. But when a big old storm came up, the mission hit a glitch. Jonah got thrown overboard and swallowed by a fish. A fish. Huh. Better learn to obey. Better learn to obey. Better than sleeping in the sun. Better learn to obey. Better learn to obey. Do the things God tells you to the very first time. Mr. Henry! Ah, oh, I hear music. 
Yes, my love! The sink is running again, and I tried, but I can't catch Whoa. it. Can you come help me? I'll be right there. I shall return. Bonjour, my friends. I've got you this time. You see, I've hidden something somewhere in there. I will give you clues, and you must spot a certain item that is hidden in Mr. Henry's workshop. Are you ready? Fantastic. Now, somewhere in there is an item that makes my fins tremble with fear. Do you see it? Look carefully. Here is clue number two. You would use this when you wish to catch a fish like the one that swallowed Jonah, yes? Can you find this twisted little item? Aha! Look there, do you see it? It is in there somewhere. Perhaps you need to look even closer, aha! <laughs> yes, you are right! It is that cook and bobber. You are a good detective, no? Yes, you are in somewhere in there. Au revoir, mon ami. As a diversion in Mr. Henry's absence, I recommend a rousing round of whom to, when to, why to obey. How come everything's such a fancy schmancy production with you? Years of research and development. Oh. Shall we begin? Miss Harriet, we'll begin with you. Oh, goody. Would you please choose a category? I'll take whom we obey, please. Righto. Now, listen closely. If given the choice, whom would you obey? A. a Rocco the bully who tells you to carry his backpack home after school. B. Your brother who tells you it's okay to stop at a friend's house before you go home. Or C. Your mother who asks you to come straight home after school even though you're not quite sure why. Let me think. Is Rocco real big and scary? Yes, I'm afraid he is. Oh, then I think I should obey my mother. You are correct. And now we go on to Bubbles. Bada boom, bada bing. Excuse me? I'm ready. And I choose why to obey. All righty then. All right, shoot. Here we go. Listen to the following scenario and tell me why you would obey. You are swimming in your school one day when you see another fish that has fallen behind. Ah, uh, that's no good. The teacher asks you to go back to it and help it to catch up. Why me? May I finish? Ah, uh, sorry. Now, this fish is not big and mean, nor is this fish particularly popular. Would you go and help that slow fish because... A. You want the other fish to see what a good fish you are. B. You want to just please your teacher so they would move you up in the pack. Or C. To please God who has been so kind to you. So you're saying that there's really nothing in it for me except that I'd be doing the right thing? Yes, it would appear so. Well, how far back is the fish? He is so far back that if you do not help him, he will never catch up and probably be eaten by a bigger fish. Uh, what kind of fish? I'm not certain, just a big fish. Uh, a big fish like in the story of Jonah? Because if that fish swallowed him, he might get to go to new places, see all kinds of new things. No, new it's not that kind of fish. He would simply be eaten and never heard from again. Wow, that's terrible. Well, I, I guess I'd obey because, uh, well, I love that little fish. You would obey out of love? Hmm. What do you think? Is it good to obey out of love? I wonder what the judge would say to that. I think we need a ruling. I believe I distinctly said ruling. This is a ruler. Oh, wait. There appears to be something written in fine print. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love counts. Hmm. Apparently this is a golden ruler. 
And also, apparently, the decision is in your favor, Bubbles. All right, yeah! Did you get the same answers as our contestants? I surely hope so. If you don't know whom, when, or why to obey, then you might be obeying the wrong people for the wrong reason. And believe me, that can never make you happy. So, remember, when trying to decide whether to obey, the right decision is choosing... God's way! Hello again. Welcome to my little pasting party. I needed some help figuring out this mystery. Let's see how you do. Okay, sugar, here's the question. You can help other kids choose to obey by being a good... A good what? Well, dear, there are two parts to this word, and here is your first picture clue. Can you tell what these are? Why, yes, they're eggs, aren't they? Sunny side up, my favorite. Let's see if you can solve our puzzle. You can help other kids to obey by being a good egg. Well, you're off to a good start. Time for me to paste another picture clue. All right, we all know that is an apple. Can you make a word from eggs and an apple? You can help other kids choose to obey by being a good eggs plus apple. Have you figured out the word I'm looking for? Well, sugar, you can help other kids to obey by being a good example. I know it doesn't sound exactly the same, but it's close enough for my neck of the woods. Did you solve my mystery? Good for you, sugar. Thanks for coming. Hope you had a fabulous time at my prim and proper pasting party. This is Professor Henry calling Mr. Henry. Oh, Professor Henry calling Mr. Henry. Come in, Mr. Henry. This is Professor Henry calling Mr. Henry. Hey, hey, this is Mr. Henry. How you doing, brother? Ha! Yeah, I'm very well, very well indeed. <laughs> I'm enjoying your theme of obedience today. Understanding obedience is of ultimate importance in living a happy life. It sure is. <laughs> Speaking of obedience, it's quite a coincidence that I just happened to be at the site where we might have found evidence of the two very first people to disobey God. You mean that? <laughs> That's right, Adam and Eve. How do you know it's Adam and Eve? Oh, quite simple, dear brother. No belly buttons. Yeah, right, of course. I researched their story thoroughly in my younger days. If I recall correctly, and I'm sure I do, the story went like this. In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. Uh, excuse me, Professor. I, I hate to interrupt, but weren't Adam and Eve uh, naked when they were first created? Uh, 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 quite right. Uh, but for the sake of our viewers... Now, God had given them everything their hearts desired. He gave them each other, a very lovely place to live, and the important task of naming all the creatures in the garden. Let's call that a yellow-crested loud talker. Let's call it a cockatoo. Why? Because it looks, looks like a cockatoo. In addition, God had provided for them all the sustenance they could ever need from all the trees in the garden, except for one tree. This right here is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God says if we eat of that tree, we die. Got it? I got it. Now, one day, while Adam and Eve were walking past the forbidden tree, she came upon a crafty creature, a real snake, who wanted to deceive her. The serpent said to her, Nice day, huh? Excuse me, but do snakes talk? Yes. This one could. And such lovely trees. I guess they do. Uh, yes, it is. And so good for food. Oh, you're never going to believe what I heard. It must be a ridiculous rumor, but uh, perhaps you can enlighten me. 
Did God really say you mustn't eat from any of the trees in the garden? Oh, no. He said we could eat from any tree we wanted, except for this one. I see. Well, I can certainly see why God wouldn't want you to eat from this one. Why? Oh, you don't know, do you? Well, you're not very clever, are you? What do you mean? Why, this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, of course, everybody knows that. Oh, good for you. Maybe you are smart after all. Now, do you know why God doesn't want you eating from this tree? It's because he wants to keep you from being smart and wise like he is. Don't you want to be wise, Eve? Wouldn't that be nice? Well, I've always, and by always, I mean since I was created a few days ago, wanted to be wise. I think that would make Adam so proud. Yes, it would now, wouldn't it? Go ahead, take a bite. Well, it is after all lunchtime. Yes, and I'm sure you're famished. What with all the naming and such that God is making you do. Go ahead. I won't tell. I shouldn't. Really? Are you sure you want your wife to be smarter than you are? Go ahead, Adam. See, I didn't die. Didn't die? What a shame! It should be noted that they didn't sin by wanting to be wise. God wants all of us to be wise. In fact, the Bible tells us that true wisdom begins with respecting God enough to do what he says. No, they sinned because they disobeyed God. And boy, were there consequences. Oh yes, oh yes. The same thing that still happens to us today. And that happened to Jonah. When he disobeyed, they were ashamed. They tried to hide from God. Well, what did God do? Well, God was used to walking with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. Shh, here he comes. So when he saw them afraid, he asked them why they were hiding and what they'd done, even though he knew the whole story already. They admitted they were wrong to have sinned. But God still had to send them out of the garden to keep them from doing any further harm. And he made the snake. And snakes, from then on, crawl on the ground. I think if I was God, I would have given up on man for what they'd done. But, but, but did he? Uh, no. In fact, knowing that mankind couldn't be perfectly obedient, he made a plan by which he himself would one day pay for our sin. That's why Jesus came and died on a cross, to pay for our disobedience and bring us back to a place where we can walk and talk with God, no matter what we've done and no matter how ashamed we may be. God loves us, and there's no reason to hide from him anymore. That's a great story. Well. I've got to be going. There's news that someone may have discovered fossilized snake footprints. Snakes leave footprints? <laughs> Maybe this one. Just guess who that might have been. <laughs> I can't wait to examine it. Brother, talk to you soon. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for checking in. Isn't that good news? No matter how disobedient we've been, God has sent Jesus to pay for it. So now we don't have to hide from God and we can be obedient out of love for him instead of fear. What a great God. It's time to test your noggin. Can you stand the pressure? Can you take the heat? It's time to put you on the hot seat. See how you do with these three little questions. Let's play the game. Jonah's smartest idea was A, running from God, B, telling God that he was sorry for running, or C, hiding out in the fish's belly? The answer is B, 
Jonah's smartest idea was telling God that he was sorry for running. The most important reason to obey God is A. He loves you B. He's bigger than you or C. He's smarter than you. The correct answer is A. The most important reason to obey God is because he loves you. And the most important lesson Adam and Eve learned was A. Never trust a snake. B. Be careful what you eat. Or C. No matter how much we mess up, God still loves us. You think you know the answer? Well, it's C. The most important reason to obey God is because he loves us, even when we disobey him. Keep your cool till the next shot at the hot seat. And now this is a little something I just put together called the McVuffler. Or is it the, the Vac Muffler? Well, anyway, it ought to quiet things down a bit. Uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, here we go now. Okay, it just needs a little more adjustment. That's all. <laughs> well, let's take a look at what we've learned. God is the one we obey because we know he loves us and he always has our best in mind. And if we want to be really happy, we'll obey God as soon as we understand what he wants us to do. And no matter how hard we try, we'll never be able to hide from God. And <laughs> if we obey him, we won't want to. Obeying God will make us the happiest we can be. <laughs> Obedience is beautiful. And you're beautiful when you obey. Okay, here's the one I want, right here. Never forget God's promise from the Bible, right here on the Scrollomatic 3000. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. So remember, when you're trying to decide whether to obey, the right choice is always, that's right, God's way. I'll see you later. So long. I'm here to help. Brush and floss every day. I'm here to make this shoot the best it can be. My lip hurts. I'm a team player. I am on the wrong page. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you come up with? <laughs> Just... oh. Oh. Would anyone be available back there to get me a bottle of water? <laughs> of my super wacky foam balls, just to give you some idea of what that must be like. I wonder if this is going to be a, a very good idea. Well, we're moving on up, up to the east side. Well, see anybody down there? And here's the letter. <laughs> OK, then. All right. And it's moving. <laughs> now, I didn't drop them that time. No. Are you happy? <laughs> Okay. If we go bam, we won't want to. Hey, hey. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, hush my mouth. Ah, I'm glad he liked it. Good boy. <laughs> Let's do it over again. Just run back. Then well, this happening out with anybody. What's up? Well, stay in place here, man. Nothing you can do. Thank you, man. Let's do it again. Do it again. Hey, Matthew, would you say, yeah, okay, here we go. Who oh, is that? Big word delivery for Mr. Henry. Oh, oh, 
Wow, perfect! Okay, that's lunch, everybody. Thanks. All right. That's lunch. Circuitous, help me. There's something wrong here. Get Chaz on the phone. Hello? Give me a lunch. I can't even see my watch. <laughs> Uh, 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 well, resourcefulness, that's what it's all about. <coughs> the great how deny, left to himself, left to himself to escape from an inexplicable prison. What will he do? <coughs> My nose itches. <laughs>